Welcome, dear friends, to Greenfield here in Llanelli on this last Sunday of June. How quickly time is going. We thank God for his faithfulness and mercy, and we come into his presence with praise and with thanksgiving this new day. Darrell and I are here to welcome you, and we pray that you will be blessed as you gather with us and the, those who watch us Sunday by Sunday in the worship and praise of a God who in Christ has loved us and given himself for us. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart, I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Let us pray. Father, for the providence of grace, we give you thanks this day. A new day has dawned. We thank you that the dawn has come to rid the world of darkness. And we come into the light of your presence, the light that shines in the face of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to whom we give all glory, honour and praise. So bless us, Lord, for this time of worship, wherever we may be today, and grant that the words of our lips and the meditations of our hearts are, are acceptable in your sight, our God and our King. Amen. Our hymn, dear friends, O God, beyond all praising. We have two readings this morning. First of all, from the prophecy of Isaiah, we read from chapter 43. Chapter 43 of Isaiah's prophecy. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When I pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honoured in my sight, and because I love you, I will give men in exchange for you and people in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring your sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Lead out those who have eyes but are blind, 
who have years but are deaf. All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble. Which of them foretold this and proclaimed to us the former things? Let them bring in their witnesses to prove they were right, so that others may hear and say, it is true. You are my witnesses, declared the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Saviour. We read from the sixth chapter of John's Gospel, and we read from verse 16 through to verse 24. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, where they got into a boat and set off across the lake for Capernaum. By now it was dark and Jesus had not yet joined them. A strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. When they had rowed three, three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water. They were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, don't be afraid. Then they were willing to take him into the boat and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were heading. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had been there and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but that they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. May the Lord bless to us our re reading from his holy word. Amen. O soul, art thou weary and troubled? Turn your eyes upon Jesus, our next hymn. <laughs>
Let us pray. Father, we read in your word today your, the preciousness of your love, that you have chosen us to be your people, that you have gathered us as your church from the furthest corners of the earth to come in faith and trust and belief in the one whom you have sent, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we come this day, Lord, on this Lord's day to worship you, to praise you with all that is within us and to glorify your holy name. Lord, we thank you that you come to us in all the troubles of our lives, that you bring that calmness and peace into our lives and into our hearts, even more when the wind is blowing and the waters grow rough. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to come into your presence today and to know that peace and that assurance. Lord, we thank you that you are the one who is faithful and your compassion knows no limits. So in whatever situation we may find ourselves today, Lord, perhaps if we're feeling lonely or vulnerable, or perhaps if life has not been as we would have wanted it to be, perhaps we have deep concern about ourselves or those we love. Lord, help us to remember that as Jesus came and calmed the storm, so he comes into our lives to bring peace and assurance and the blessedness of his presence and his words that say, do not be afraid, it is I. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to come with that confidence today and to be sure that your presence is with us in all the changing scenes of our lives. So, Father, thank you for this time together, the short time when we gather together and praise your name when we wait upon you to hear your voice speaking to our hearts, to bring our prayers for ourselves and those we love and to commend our troubled world to you in its desperate need. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you hearken to our prayers. For you have chosen us. You have given us through grace that wondrous gift of your salvation. And we come as those who know that indeed in Christ we are ransomed, healed, restored and forgiven. To you be the glory, Lord, for none other are worthy. Father, we remember before you, especially those in our church fellowship who are confined by illness and infirmity. And for every church family, Lord, that is represented today by those who may be watching this service. As we recall to mind those dear ones, our brothers and sisters in Christ who perhaps are going through times of hospital treatment or perhaps are going through times of infirmity and possibly coming even to the end of their lives. May they know the peace of Christ, the assurance that Jesus comes to calm the storm. And it is he who says, it is I, do not be afraid. May we, like Jesus of old, be willing to remember with gratitude and thanksgiving all the gifts of his grace and to know that the Christ who came is the Christ who is the same today, yesterday and forever. Altogether new, altogether wonderful. He, the rock of ages, he, the Christ of our salvation. We give him praise, Lord. And know that he imparts to us the peace, the peace that is beyond all human understanding, but is for those who love him and seek to serve him. Again, Father, we commend to you our troubled world with all its diverse needs. And as we as a nation anticipate a, a general election this coming week, we pray, Lord, that in wisdom and in fortitude and in understanding, those who seek to represent us and to serve us in Parliament and in high offices within the state may seek the counsel of God, may seek the ways of the Word of God, might seek to mould together different factions in our society for good, that we might be a nation under God, and that we may seek in the justice and righteousness that is of him, good for all of our people, with no exceptions. So, Father, we pray for this coming week, and we pray that your leading and guidance will be upon all who participate in the vote and all who are leading and will lead to a new tomorrow. And so, our Father, now we commit ourselves to you. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your presence with us today. And long, long after we have left this place and perhaps gone back to our daily responsibilities, may we know that you are with us and whatever concerns we may have, that with Christ all will be well. So hear our prayers, Lord, for these things we ask in Jesus' name, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, what an assurance we have in Christ. And that's our next hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Well, dear friends, we gather to worship today and we thank God for this opportunity of worship. And wherever you are watching our service from today, I pray you will know God's peace and his presence. The prophet Isaiah was a messianic prophet whose prophecies are always full of hope and anticipation. We read in the, in, in the, in, in the nativity narratives about the one, the baby will be born, who will be mighty counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. We read as well of the suffering servant of Isaiah, the Christ who would come into the world to die and suffer for the sins of humanity, who lived and died and rose again for us. In chapter 43, we find the words of the prophet to be so meaningful. For here we have the expression of God's compassion and love for his children. It is the Lord who had chosen one nation to be his own, that they might be a light unto the Gentiles, that all might know that in the fullness of time, the Redeemer would come to fulfill all the prophecies that Isaiah and all the other prophets made. And it's wonderful to know that. Dear friends, our faith doesn't come to us in a vacuum. It came in to fulfill all the promises that God has made through his word and are fulfilled in the coming of Jesus into the world. That's what scripture reads. And that's what scripture says to us. And we can trust the word of God for we have seen the fullness of his glory in the Lord Jesus Christ, who came not to do away with the law, not to do away with the words of the prophets, but to fulfill them in his life, in his ministry, 
in his death and resurrection from the dead. To come back to Isaiah 43, what does it say? First of all, it says that the children of Israel were the chosen ones of God. He formed you. I have redeemed you. I have summoned you unto myself. And that's the assurance that uh, the children of Israel always had, of course. They were chosen for God, by God for a purpose. They were, they were the guardians of the law of God that had given, been given to Moses. They were the bastions that enabled the, the prophets to speak so eloquently of the very nature and character of God, calling the people back in repentance when they wandered far. And like Isaiah, giving words of comfort and blessing along the way. Even in the Babylonian captivity, where they were separated for a while from the land that God had promised. God was still there with them, redeeming them, bringing them back unto himself. Isn't it wonderful to know that this is a God who has worked through history. This is a God who has made his will known through a people that he called to be his own, those who were the apple of his eye. So we remember that with gratitude and thanksgiving. And we remember that we too in Christ have come into a relationship of grace. Ransomed, healed, restored and forgiven in him. The one who came to fulfill the words of Isaiah the prophet. The one who came in the fullness of time according to Isaiah's prophecy. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. And that's the fulfillness of God's grace. And we are chosen in Christ to be his people. We have come by faith to trust and believe in him. By the work of the Holy Spirit, we have committed our lives to him. We are his church, his gathered community. Those he calls unto himself to be his people in the darkness and the evil world in which we live. Isn't it wonderful to know that today? And we do not claim that with any arrogance or self-righteousness, but to know that as God looked with compassion upon a people he called his own, so God in Christ looks in compassion upon us, his people who have come to trust and believe in Jesus. And we remember in the ministry of Jesus, we find that wonderfully fulfilled, that, that certainty we have. We have been called by the grace of God. We have responded to that call. We have trusted in Jesus. We are his church. Dear friends, we are indeed blessed by being part of that community of faith that God has chosen to be his own. And you know, the wonderful truth is that all are welcome. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. Count it a blessing today that you are part of the church of Jesus Christ. Be faithful to that community to which you have been called because it is a precious community. You are among the loved of God. And we remember that with gratitude and thanksgiving as we read here. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. And then the assurance that having been called into the fold of God, we are those who receive his blessings and his compassion and his protection. The story from John's gospel follows on from the Story we looked at last week about the feeding of the 5,000, God's provision in feeding so many on that particular day. But it leads on to Jesus walking upon the water in the midst of the storm of Lake Tiberias. Jesus walked on the water. We find that there was a storm, the disciples were afraid, but Jesus came on board and the storm ceased to be. When you pass through the waters, as I said, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. Wonderfully prophesied here what would happen that day in Lake Tiberias. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. Isn't it wonderful to know that we are protected and we are kept by the grace of God? None of us are exempt from the trials and temptations of life, dear friends. None of us. None of us are exempt from the illness and infirmity and the sad occurrences of life that, that can often come our way, even though we trust and believe. The disciples that day in the boat were panic-stricken. They really were. And in the accounts we have in the New Testament, they do vary in terms of, of what was reported that day. 
We find that here in John's Gospel, Jesus comes aboard. We find in the other synoptic Gospels, Peter walks on the water to meet with Jesus and keeps his eyes fixed entirely on him that avoided him sinking into the deep. When Jesus came on board, there was peace. The storm abated, it was no more. Sometimes we can fall into simple cliches in the Christian church and, and sometimes those can be quite unsettling. The reality is that what happened here was an eternal insurance, eternal insu assurance that God will protect and keep his people. That doesn't exempt us, as I said, from the trials of life, but it certainly gives us the impetus to know that we are never alone. And it gives us that confidence that we can go into each new day knowing that in our hearts. Because that's the promise that God made when he said, I will be with you, do not be afraid. We can see and look at many examples in, of those who have stood the test of time and, and those who, who, who we remember especially, who stood up to all the difficulties and all the changes of their lives. George Matheson, I will trace the rainbow through the lane. The rain, despite being rejected because of his blindness by the girl he loved. And what can we say about those through the ages who have stood firm in their faith? And those who have stood firm in the midst of persecution, as many are today in many countries of the world, where to profess faith in Christ is to, to risk death itself. They are confident. They have put everything on the altar of service and they know that they will have their reward. None of us, as I said, are exempt. But for the Christian, the assurance is that Christ is with us. And with that confidence comes that inner joy to trace the rainbow through the rain and know the promise is not vain, the dawn shall tearless be. In my ministry, I meet many people who are going through difficult times and, and settling times in their lives. And I've always been amazed at the confidence and the contentment even in the midst of pain and suffering for those Christians who, who know that perhaps their time in this world is not long, but their eyes have beheld something more, something that's more glorious, and the promises that Jesus made have become so real in their lives, and they hold on to that and are sure of it. And many have passed into glory in that confidence and in that hope. The early Christian church was subject to terrible persecution, as we know. But yet they went to the amphitheaters of Rome singing praises to God, for they know that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ was with them. When you walk with the Lord in the light of his word, with a glory he sheds on the way. And so the calling of God, when we respond to his calling, gives us eternal friendship and that assurance of his love, his peace, and his presence. And then finally here, there's the compassion of God. The fullness of his compassion to see that God had not only chosen the nation of Israel, not only been their protector and guide, but in his compassion and grace, he speaks of all that will be fulfilled. That lead out those who have eyes but are blind, who are ears but are deaf. All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble. Let them bring in their witnesses to prove they were right, so that others may hear and say it is true. You are my witnesses, declare the Lord, and my servant in whom I have chosen. In the fullness of time, this chapter was fulfilled in the coming of Jesus into the world. Before God, in eternity, before the formation of the world, God had ordained a way whereby we who are far away might come near to him. The compassion and grace of God resounds through the word of God and is fulfilled in Jesus. Last week, we looked at the boy with the, little, the five loaves and two fishes. What happened there? 5,000 were fed. We come to this latter part of the sixth chapter of John and we see the way in which Jesus came and calmed the storm. We go on and look at the ministry of Jesus and see the love and compassion that was extended to all who came to him. It wasn't confined, it wasn't held back, it was given to all who would come, a centurion servant, a woman with the issue of blood. It's, 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 it's the wondrous compassion of God which we see fully in his death and resurrection from the dead. At one time, Peter said to Jesus, to whom shall we go? And I would leave that with you today. To whom can we go when the trials of life come, when the storms come? There is only one, one who fulfills all righteousness 
There is only one who by his Holy Spirit is present with you as he is present with us where two or three are gathered in his name. The one we trust and believe in. And for that, we give thanks to God today. I pray, dear friends, wherever you are today, you will know that you are a child of God, that you will know that whatever your circumstances, that Christ is with you. And as he came upon that little boat in that lake of Tiberias and calmed the storm, so he can do it in your life. No empty cliches here, because I have none to say. All I would say is hold on to the compassion and grace that is in Jesus. For in him, indeed, is our hope and our joy and the certainty of eternal life one day with him. That's the promises of God and the things of the world grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus and you will know him to be the peace in the storm. Amen. Dear friends, let us join together and sing our final hymn, Love Lifted Me.
now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and those we love now and always. Amen.